another aspect of uh, universal design is uh, flexibility. Mm -hmm. And uh, with our uh, public school co uh, colleagues, uh, they talk about differentiated instruction. Mm. Um, it, sometimes we, we talk about, uh, say, Gardner's multiple intelligences and, and teaching to different learning styles. H how have you incorporated flexibility in, into your mm. teaching? Um, uh, in terms, first off, in terms of just the actual delivery, uh, on a daily basis I try to vary the format. Um, uh, uh, in general I tend not to be much of a lecturer, but I do do some lecturing, right. um, but I try to vary the extent to which uh, I'm leading large group discussions um, or uh, in a number of my classes, not actually in the, the, the romantics class that I did, uh, uh, turning to a UDI course, but many, many of my courses feature student leaders who lead right. a large group discussion, small group work, uh, a variety of kinds, um, uh, requiring some take home work to bring in as well. So ver verifying or uh, uh, varying the format uh, that uh, students can expect to find in the class so that, you know, not everyone does well trying to listen to a teacher, especially if they have a uh, you know, somewhat monotone voice like myself, <laughs> to talk to them for 50 or 75 minutes. Exactly. Um, so yeah. uh, even within each class period, can, you, can I give a, a couple of different activities so that to keep, uh, keep them engaged at, at different points? Um, but also in the types of assignments, you know, looking for, uh, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm in English, so I'm always going to have some sort of writing, but uh, looking for ways I can work in, in speaking into my, uh, uh, into my courses as well. Different types of writing assignments, more informal, more formal. Right. Um, in the past, I always had felt, uh, when it came to the final exam, for example, that that was a real sort of litmus, litmus test for my students, and even if I had been you know, more user friendly uh, with some of the assignments during the semester. This is where I want to say, okay, you've had the whole semester. Come into this two and a half hours and without any books and tell me, show me what you remember. And uh, it, that goes back to what I was saying at the beginning of the interview about, you know, crucible testing versus teaching and yeah. learning. And so, you know, I moved to a take home examination um, and with parts of it even as a, a collaborative option for students to allow them, if they wanted to, to work in, in pairs or small groups on some of it. Yeah. Uh, again, to, to allow them to carry their strengths. And on those lines, another thing I did was, um, uh, you know, I, I made sure I thought about it ahead of time to determine what the ranges were to keep it uh, uh, within parameters that uh, I was comfortable with. But I allowed students to do some adjustment where the, the weighting of the, the different assignments and how much they would count toward their final grade were so that if there was a student who knew, for example, that they tend not to do well um, in uh, formal essays but really thrive in an in-class presentation, they could fiddle with some of those percentages. Um, and, you know, it's it's definitely not in my classes. I mean, if you talk to any of my students, they'll, they'll tell you I don't hand out A's uh, very easily. So it's, it's not about, you know, wanting to feel like, oh, I just well, I want to be able to give everybody an A. Um, but I, I, I'm a teacher because I want I want my students to learn, yeah. and and if my assignments are not about jumping through hoops, it's about something that I think if they do this, they're going to learn something. If they're actually putting the time into it, yeah. then you know, then I'm all for uh, uh, allowing them to say, well, th this these sorts of activities are the ones that I will be able to better demonstrate to you what it is I'm learning. Yeah. Uh, in terms of uh, graphics. I, I know you've mentioned text and, and speech, audio. Um, in, in my world, where we're presenting a lot of information online, uh, we talk about cognitive load quite a bit mm -hmm. and uh, strategies such as proximity, uh, limiting the multi-sensory uh, sure. inputs. Uh, have, have any of those items, uh, have you could, thought about any of those? Yeah. Uh, I'm concerns. hoping to explore a lot more of that in the spring. Um, I think that that aspect seemed more, seemed maybe perhaps the most overwhelming mm -hmm. um, when with the previous project, um, uh, in part because, you know, I'm, I am, uh, uh, I've, I've actually amazed myself with how, how many of my courses uh, have incorporated learning technologies and where it actually becomes part of the centerpiece of the course. Right. Um, uh, but that being said, you know, I, I, I kind of feel like it's, a, it's always a second language for me that right. I'm picking up. 
Uh, and so um, my work with uh, disability studies has made me very aware about uh, not just wanting to have something online, but understanding that you know, you're going to have to have a certain sort of coding or format for someone to be able to manipulate it properly, right. to be able to, um, uh, to, to read it, you know, uh, in a way that's going to be most comfortable for them. And that, right. that's one of the things that, especially since my spring project is, uh, is a disability studies course, right. that I'm uh, hoping to get help from, from you. Hey, uh, we're, we're people, all... People like Jim Groom, who's that's right. know, my uh, liaison here in our department, and I'm going to lean heavily on you guys to, to, to make sure that that end of, of the course is, you know, uh, it's, it's going to be acceptable.